Welcome to Overtime on Inferno, your weekly roundup of all the big stories in CSGO in less time than it takes to remove a beach ship from the Suez Canal. A quick reminder to please refer your friends to the pod using the link below in the show notes. It super helps us and you guys can get some cool real life Counter-Strike stickers for referring only three people. I'm Logan. This is AZSK. Let's get into it. Today we're talking about two things. Just two. We're going to talk about Cloud9 and Med Lions. One org is just restarting their roster in Counter-Strike, and one org has their Counter-Strike division going on temporary leave. We're going to have Regin in later, who's the new senior manager from Med Lions, who's going to talk about that roster. So let's talk about Cloud9. They're dead. It's over. Yep. Okay, don't. now we're done talking about Cloud9. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> move on there. Don't. As I as I put in the newsletter, don't cry because it's over. Cry because you supported a really bad team. <laughs> I mean, so, they, they were. I mean, there's, there's no other way of putting it than the the Colossus was a colossal disappointment. In truth, yeah, it's like the it's like the the, the Giza the, the Leaning Tower of Giza just just it fell. Pisa. <laughs> it didn't it didn't actually Lit say Pisa. 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 No, Giza is the place in Egypt. It's pyramids of Giza. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or it's or really it's well. a uh, or it's a, a a Cockney adult male. That's a joke for the English portion of the uh, podcast. <laughs> okay. Um. So Cloud Nine closed their Counter Strike division. What like three or four days ago, five days ago, something like that. They uh they said that they were going to come back when COVID is over, when the pandemic's over. They wanted a real north american team which as a north american boy i'm super happy to see that somebody's still willing to invest money into the scene but i have to just say uh, be like real north <laughs> real north american team is an oxymoron <laughs> you're either a real team or you're a north american team pick one well could they could be like a north american org with a european team yeah but then you're not a, <laughs> then you're not a real north you're not a north american team you're a North American. That's what I'm saying it's not a real European North American team. team. I, I think right. no. I mean, all jokes aside, it is good to see somebody uh, willing to build a North American roster. However, I do think it's going to be difficult to find, like, you know, find the player. I guess they're hoping to get Floppy and Zeppa and keep those two. I know uh, Floppy wasn't particularly happy with playing with a he doesn't want to live in europe he wants to live in america i think he wants to play in an american team so if, if there is a you know a sort of promise to him look we're going to build an american team around you i think he's likely to be a bit more uh happy but yeah. obviously with the uh the nell report that cloud9 were dropping out of csgo temporarily uh he did mention that a few of the players have been looking to go to valorant or have been offered places in Valorant, so it wouldn't surprise me if that it, those are the North American players, which makes the talent pool that Cloud9 can draw from when they go to build their new roster uh, even more diminished than it currently is. And it's actually even smaller than you might think because they've kind of burned bridges with the the now extra salt players. That's because true. Because they 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 decided to drop that team and just say, you know what, we're going to go with this international team. And now Extra Salt is absolutely destroying every single human that they touch, um, in game, obviously. Uh, but <laughs> I felt like I needed to clarify that. So yeah, like they they're probably not going to be able to get like the OC, your your Sonic, your JT. Uh, I I assume Marky and Fang, if they really wanted to leave, that they could. But like. You're you're playing on a team. You're doing well. Cloud Nine's making a new team. I just, I, extra salt isn't going to be probably bought out by Cloud Nine. And even if they were, I don't think they would want to go. No, so th- I agree. This is starting to lead you with like FPL players. It's starting to leave you with like maybe Triumph getting bought out by Cloud Nine or something like that if they wanted like to make a new roster. But it's it's almost actually... worth buying Triumph out just to get like Shake Zula Shig. and his like coaching staff because I think Shake Zula is. He is the the guy in NA now. If you're gonna build a team, you kind of just want him as the as the head guy because guy is a mastermind. I think he knows anyone who like has fired a bullet in CS:GO in NA. Sheikh Zula is aware of them, and he'll tell you how good they like. He he's just he just knows everyone, and he's the sort of person that you want to lead a team like that. However, he has been on triumph. I think 
pretty much since the beginning of that org's uh, existence in CSGO. So I think it'd be difficult to convince him. So you'd almost have to just buy Triumph just to get him. Other than that, there, I mean, there obviously is talent, but I wouldn't be surprised if they had to supplement it with some um, some of the South American, Central American talent. For example, Malv's. I mean, <laughs> I mean, all jokes aside, the guy speaks English, and we talk about him every single podcast. And there's a good reason why we talk about him every single podcast. I'm, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. team right now would be like Shake, Floppy, Zeppa, Malv's, and like You'd get Vandy a... back from Valorant. <laughs> You'd probably need. A, um, I guess Shake Zula is sort of a supportive type player, but you probably need like a fourth man in there to go with that level of firepower. I mean, if you can convince. Cynic and B-Wills, those two are really good from Triumph. Uh, there will be this... Uh, Exotic is pretty good on Rebirth. He's a good player. Um, somebody I would be potentially looking... Uh, I mean, th- there's someone available who m- probably still has the same stipulations as the Extra Salt roster, except he's not doing as well, which is Modem. Modem, yeah, Modem's really good. He's, I like Modem a lot. He's playing for a High Coast right now, which if you yes. don't follow America, you don't know who High Coast is. And if you do follow America, there's a 50-50 shot that you know who High Coast is. <laughs> they uh, High Coast also have RCF, who is an absolute maniac. I really like yeah. watching that guy play. He that's the he former New crazy. England Whalers. That's the former New England Whalers team, right? Uh, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I RCF actually is, really is crazy. Him. I like him. He's Brazilian though, so. Again, you you are sort of looking towards the South American part of the Americas, but I personally wouldn't be against that if I was building a team in North America. Yeah, yeah, and there's also there's also always the contingency of like the Canadian players that we don't hear a huge amount from, but like when they get into the pro scene, they immediately just stomp everyone. Like I'm thinking Twist, I'm thinking Naf, I'm thinking like Shroud from old, like old Shroud, like. We've we've always had good Canadian players, and we haven't had a new one in a little while. I guess Fang would be our newest one, but like we could always see some somebody coming from the Great White North up there. Um, Maybe they need to like reclaim some of the old Valorant players. I'm thinking yeah. like Curry. I mean, maybe try and get Katie over from the C9. She is uh, killing in Valorant. Is it C9 White is that the? I believe it's C9 White. But she is absolutely destroying everyone. Yeah, she's just, uh, she's unbelievable. She no, was really Cloud good. Nine, she was really good in CS. It doesn't surprise me. This is this is all this. Cloud Nine should just say, "Yo, Flom, make a team, and you're going to be the coach." So it would be like JoJo and Katie, and just he'll figure out the rest. Shake, Floppy, Modem. There you go. Done. I, I think if it. I, was... I fixed North American Counter Strike, everyone. <laughs> I think if I was like looking, telling somebody right, build a North American roster, I'd just ask Maui Snake. Yeah, the guy knows good, everyone in NA. Yeah, he's a good one. He knows everything. That, that's what you do. You get Shake, you get Flom, you get Maui Snake. You get them all three of them to collaborate. Just the biggest brains in it's one. It's too room. much knowledge, I think. <laughs> they sure. would I'm make sure the that... world beater. They they would be basically Thanos, except he's just got three gemstones. He doesn't have like the five. They'd put the NA in Thanos. That worked so well. <laughs> um, all right. Let's go, uh let's let's sort of talk about the other org. So Mad Lions, we talked about them last week. Um, we were very wrong on everything that we predicted about them. Um, but Regin actually reached out to us and said that he wanted to come onto the pod, if we were willing, um, to talk about the new roster and what it was going to be like. So we sat down with him about an hour ago. Here's that. What's your name? How do we pronounce it? And who are you? <laughs> well, my name is Alan. I uh, go by the nickname Regin or Rayan, or however you want to pronounce it. I don't really care. I wrecked and everything. Uh, I currently live in the Czech Republic, but I am actually from Denmark. But yeah. Okay. Um, so you are the new senior analyst for Mad Lions. Right? Senior manager. Um, senior manager, I'm sorry. Senior manager for Mad Lions. What does that role entail? But basically, it's, it's like a general manager position. Uh, they just call it differently. Uh, so basically, if you have Henry G uh, from Cloud9, it's basically the same. I think that's okay. summarized it uh, pretty much everything. So you're the one who helped put the team together and figure out which players were going where and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the boss, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we have the boss on now. That, okay. Um, all right, so you guys unveiled your new lineup last Tuesday. Um, 
that lineup being what is it? TMB, Tudson, JL. I've already JL. Uh, Let's see if you remember. I've already Waro forgotten. 2K. <laughs> oh, yeah, Waro Waro, 2K. Waro 2K, Sousal, and a missing one person. Keen. Keen. Keen yeah. Okay. Uh, that was a question I actually wanted to ask about Keen. Is that uh, he has very few games on record, and he's taken breaks uh, during the thing. Uh, how was he somebody that you found, and why did you pick him up specifically? Well, I think we need to to take a step back and and look at how we we built the team. Uh, we were focusing on rookies in the beginning uh, to figure out who uh, we want to work with in the in the future. But at the same time, I don't want to just uh, pick someone up. I want them on board to make sure that you get 100% from them. Uh, this is why we signed them. Uh, they are on uh, uh, contracts as everyone else is. Uh, but uh, we just chose it this way to make sure we get the 100% of the player and not only like 50% on you don't really know who it is. Uh, so there might happen changes uh, in the future. Um, but regarding uh, Keen specifically, uh, we did our scouting process. I had a lot of talk with uh, LMBT uh, from uh, the Face It uh, Pro League. Um, he's like the kind of coach from FPLC players, stuff like that. Uh, and then I had some talks with some people who, who are more into the Baltic area. Um, and uh, his name came up several times. So we decided to try him out because he was an in-game leader. So, so that's why. All right. All right. Um, so let's talk about LMBT for a second. Uh, so you mentioned on Twitter you used Face It and LMBT to help you guys decide what what direction you were going with this roster. So can you explain that connection a little bit more and how you guys chose certain players over others? Um, I mean, we were looking and we are still looking for the let's call them tier one players to 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 join the roster, but it has to be on our terms and it has to be on our uh, demands and the way we want to do it. I'm not willing to just go out and buy anyone just because he likes a big paycheck. Uh, I want them because they believe in the project we're trying to build. Um, so we, we have been in talks with several uh, of the tier one players, as you would uh, call them. Uh, but we just haven't found the one we are willing to work with or they didn't believe enough in the project. And like I said, I don't. if they don't believe in it, I don't see any chance or like reason for them to even hmm. join us, even though they might if, they, if I pay them enough money, you know? Uh, <laughs> so So... The reasoning for this was like, okay, let's try and see what's out there. You see teams like Gambit, Spirit, uh, I'm missing one. CS team. Virtus Pro. Yeah, Virtus Pro. Like a lot of youngsters coming up. Uh, and I think uh, those or they are the future. And and it's something we have to, to look into and not just only throw money after the names who are already there when you see them doing so well. So... And with the with the coaching staff behind them, like we have a full time sports psychologist, a full time uh, performance manager, like with the physical health and nutrition, and everything. Uh, we have Musa Bani as an assistant coach. We have Koob as a coach. Uh, a lot of people are telling me that I'm also a coach. That's I, I I'm not a coach. I'm of course gonna. If someone asks me in my opinion, I'm gonna give it to them, of course. But it's not like I'm sitting with the team and practicing and everything. Um, like we like everybody know i have a band and i'm gonna uphold that 100 um, percent meaning that i'm not gonna be with them on the server and in, in, in time or anything so um i'm That's, jumping a little uh, bit now sorry but uh, it's all it's, it's it all it all makes sense in the end hopefully See, so you mentioned uh, obviously gambit and spirit as the sort of that's the sort of long-term aim of this roster what are the short-term goals that you're looking to achieve with uh, these five players, or these six players, as it were. Uh, right now, we we are experimenting a lot of things. Like we we initially want seven man roster, uh, but again, we don't want to sign one just to sign one. Like we want to do our due diligence here uh, and try and do rotations. That's why you also see some players playing one map, another player playing another map, and sitting out. Uh, like even uh, Keen is sitting out on train, and we just put Voro in the in game leader and try it out. Uh, we, we try to figure out where's our limitations and what is possible to do. I feel there's so many aspects in CS, especially when we talk about six or seven man roster, uh, they, they haven't been explored because there are not many teams can afford to explore it. Uh, like paying the players and not getting any results or uh, paying the players, not getting the results they want, uh, like all these things, you know, and, and everybody want to win. 
we also want to win, but we are also aware that it's a process and it takes time. And for us, it it doesn't really matter if, if it takes six months or a year. Like it, we need to figure out what's the best way and be able to 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 do like a cycle where well, okay, now one player get bored or um, whatever happens. You know, we want to integrate a new player uh, fairly quickly that we don't have to think about it that much because we have everything in place in the system. Uh, now I want to make sure and. I cannot state this enough. We're not looking out to just sell off these players once they're good enough. Like we are trying to to aim for a top contender, but that is not going to be now. Like we are aware of that. It's going to be probably first next year, like in 2022. Uh, but during the online era, uh, like we have right now with the COVID situation and everything, it's, it's a perfect time to do this. Um, and at the same time, you're also giving a chance to all these upcoming rookies, you know, and we want to be the team where people are like looking at, oh, I want to be part of Mad Lions. Uh, this is our long-term goal, of course, and and uh, I think we can achieve it. All right, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about some individual players right now. So when Mad Lions picked up T and B before the entire roster changed and uh, players went to Mouseport, players were benched, that kind of stuff. Um, he was supposed to play in a Danish team, and now he's going to be playing an international one. Do you think he can make that jump between playing in that full Danish team and now an international team? Yeah, for sure, he has been having his doubt about it, and and also, uh, like I would be lying if I said he was he was happy about the change happening. Uh, but 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 I think he he's able to do it. I, like I see him, he's a professional, and I see him going into to the theory, the practice, the official matches whatever uh, like 100 percent. so so i'm not really worried about that so much um also us in denmark we speak fairly good english so it's not like a big deal in communication wise and all that so um it, it's a big shift for him uh, and and he has to learn it as well uh, but he's doing an amazing job and i'm really surprised about him how good he is all right how good do you think tmb can be in the future. I know a lot of uh, Danish fans uh, that I know were very high in him and wanted him to join one of the bigger teams, uh, bigger teams in Denmark, as it were. How good do you think he can be? I think it's very early in his career still. Uh, I mean, sky's the limit now, uh, depending on how much you're working for it and how much you really want it. Uh, there's going to be ups and downs in your career. And when he signed, well, when he signed with Mad Lions, I don't believe he had this thought that he's going to be playing his national team uh, two months later. So that's uh, no question about it. Uh, if you look at it from his perspective, a downside, because that was not his his idea of joining the Mad Lions. Uh, but if he keeps working and th- there's no question that he's going to be uh, one for the future who's very, very high potential. Like he's uh, very young and the way he, he reminds me a lot about Frozen, like uh, first time at Frozen, he was... 16 or 17 and he just blew my mind with his communications understanding of the game it's basically the same um, for tmb all right um what are some misconceptions that you guys keep getting about your new team and like can you quell any of those misconceptions <laughs> i mean one of the obvious ones like we're cheap no like we're a cheap team we don't want to go out and uh, spend money and all that but that that's not true like I've been in talks with Cloud9. I've been in talks with uh, other teams, you know, like it's not like we're not willing to spend the money, but why would I pay money for something? I don't know if it's going to work. Like I don't get it. Like I, I think Cloud9 deserves a lot of credit for their project and the way they did. Like if, if it would have worked out, amazing. Now, sadly it didn't work out. So the backlash is there. Of course it's going to be there, but I don't, uh, I, I don't think it was uh, a mistake from them doing it that, that, that way. But for me, I'm maybe a bit more conservative with my budget and thinking like long term. I rather want to have these three, four pieces ready and then fill out with some experience. You know, uh, it's easy to do it that way than the, the, the other way around, I think. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, it is a cheaper way of doing it. Like, <laughs> that's just a matter of fact of it. Uh, everybody knows that. I'm not going to sit here and lie or hide about it. Uh, like hide behind it but it's just important for me that we do it correctly and we don't just spend our whole budget within two months and we're stuck with the same lineup for a year i I think that is super bad to do and and that will create a lot of frustration down the line i I rather want to be able to to make several roster changes throughout the year and figure out 
what iteration we want to go for, how the coaching staff works. Uh, do we need more staff behind the players? Do we need higher analyst, one more coach? Whatever it might be, we're really open-minded and trying to experiment a lot. Um, so right now we're trying with the two ops, as you probably have seen, like with Tutsan and Voro, where they swap out and Kuben can say, okay, well, Voro is on fire. Let's put him in. Uh, maybe put both in on train. It works super well. I mean, like, we smashed ends first map and then we should probably have won the second map but that was that's how it is like you, they're a good team and you know and i think it just shows some of the strength we have in the team mm -hmm. so let's let's talk about that the multiple op thing um i i remember watching HLTV confirmed and kuban came out and said that you guys were looking at this these two offers switching based on play style and based on map and that kind of stuff. What's your thought process behind going with multiple ops that we've seen six man rosters of like switching one player out because they play the map better, but we've never seen this whole like modular team design. Yeah. I mean, this is just part of the experiment we're doing now. Like what is the best way of making, let me re let me rephrase it and put it in a lot of terms. Like in football, you have a goalkeeper, but you also have a second goalkeeper and they compete for the, first place and they have a coach uh, coaching them same do we like musambani has to, used to be an opera when one is playing he's coaching the other and vice versa you know and and i think it's just it opens up and it puts pressure on the other one uh but it's like the what you would call the the pressure of the bench and um they really want to to just do well all the time and and i think we see it a lot of times like both of them are performing really really well uh so yeah, I mean, it might be the future. It might be absolute dog shit. <laughs> Sorry if I can uh, curse. But <laughs> oh no, no you no, can definitely right, curse so on ahead. here. You're fine. I mean, we are we are doing this to experiment, see what is the possibilities, and we're not scared of failing. Like you learn every time you fail. Hopefully, if you don't, then you do something wrong. And and in the end, it, it falls back on me, of course. But um, we are just trying to do this as to figure out is there a way of using this that haven't been found before trying it out while you have an organization who actually believes in it can be done. Uh, now, one thing I want to, to maybe put in context is like their League of Legends roster has been extremely successful uh, and they have been doing this by focusing on the coaching staff behind them and actually taking up rookies and a few experience, you know, and doing the cycle and they have been had huge success like in the past two years, I would almost say. Like, um, So it is a model that works, but does it work in CS and how does the model look in one year? Like, I don't know that, uh, but that's what we're trying to figure out. I think it's uh, interesting that you bring up the League of Legends roster who were very uh, cutthroat uh, after one year where they, they succeeded last year and they still made a uh, double change on the top side of the map. And one of the questions we got uh, from Twitter for you was, uh, if somebody does underperform on this roster, will you just uh, go out to the best FPL player or another hot prospect and just bring them in and replace them? Or is this uh, a core of six that you really believe in and you're going to give them a year and then review it? How long do you get? <laughs> I, think, I think that's hard to say because it depends how much the player is missing and compare how much effort as you as a leader, coach, whatever, have to put in. Um, let's say everybody is missing two traits to become really good then it's probably manageable. But if one is missing six traits, then it's probably like, then you have to focus a lot more on him and you actually neglect the rest of them. So I think it's about how good you are. Uh, I believe like the, the, the six we have now, uh, without naming any names, I see at least four of them being good enough to, to take it to the next level, uh, at least four of them. All right. Um, let's talk about the support staff that you've gotten. So you've got Musambani, who's a legend in Spain, who's a former offer. He's now your assistant coach. You've got Kubin, who was part of the Golden Five, longtime coach for Virtus Pro. How did you get them to be on board? What is their jobs going to look like? And how much of an effect do you think they're having on the team already? Uh, like Musambani was already a part of Mad Lions. He was actually the coach when they had the Spanish team. Um, and then he moved to like more an assistant managing role when uh, Peacemaker came in um actually became like more a manager like full-time manager than anything else uh so when i was reached out by Matt lions i i kind of like i, I knew musambani i've known him for many years like through name not on a personal level but um 
I had a talk with him and explained my vision of it. And he was just on board right away. And uh, like I, one thing I did from the start was being honest towards everyone in the organization, towards everyone, almost as honest as I can to, to the public eye, you know? Um, and I told him also, well, I don't see you as being the head coach. I want to get someone top tier uh, who was out there and there was not so many of them. Uh, I, we, we had, I had talked with almost every coach that was available at the time. Uh, and Coop and I, we just uh, hit it off right away. Uh, I mean, I was probably also a soccer because I was also a 1.6 fan and I was never that good as he was. Uh, so, so I'm not going to hide behind that. <laughs> Little fanboy me was happy when I saw his face pop up on the webcam. Uh, but uh, we, we have really similar visions of the way we want to do it. And he just fulfilled these criteria really, really well. Um, regarding like if, if, if the team are learning from, from us all, I, I believe so they are. And it's, it's about doing it right, you know, and it's a learning process for everyone because suddenly we're sitting, like when we're on TeamSpeak, suddenly 10 people are sitting there, you know, and it's like normally you're a maximum of six, you know. So it, it's a learning curve for everyone and know when to talk, when not to talk, when, who like just time management in general because then Musabani want to talk for half an hour. Then the sports psychologists want to talk and Kuhn want to talk. Suddenly you have three hours of theory and you don't get to practice almost. So it's like <laughs> in, in the beginning, it's been very rough in the regard, but uh, we are learning all the time and implementing as best way we can. Do you think that having Kuban as a very experienced and uh, you know honored coach, do you think that's a substitute for having an experienced in-game leader? Obviously, you have a very young team. Do you think that having the experienced coach is is almost a better idea? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's a better idea. Uh, this is also why we're still looking out after that experienced player uh, at some point or another. Um, but uh, it is a reasonable substitute to have when we're talking practices and the online era because he, he has been in game leading himself when he was playing and know how to play when we're playing when talking top tier CS. So. It's a substitution that works, uh, but as I said, Keen is our in-game leader and he's allowed to lead how he wants. Uh, with the, like, He had to learn a lot of things, but that, that's how it is. And uh, I, we, we are going to need that experienced player on the team. There's no question about that. Like The whole team also knows that we're looking for someone. One might be cut, we don't know. Like I'm being honest with everyone here and saying this is we don't know where we are from a month right now because... A lot of conversations going on. Uh, there's probably going to happen a lot of uh, swap arounds after Pro League is done. Um, you know, Cloud9 is split up, so probably someone is interesting in some players there. Uh, they're going to leave someone open, and we're going to see what's left. Uh, I don't want to sound like Volterish, where you like pick up the dead meat, but uh, it, it is actually kind of what we're looking for right now, because like we just need that voice in the team where players can look to it and look up to that person and, and trust in him. This is the most thing we need right now because Kuben can be that, but he's not on the server. And that's like uh, like playing on the server and that's just different, you know? Um, so, yeah. All right. So a week ago when we recorded our podcast, we guessed five people that you guys would pick. Almost. Up. You almost got we it. Were, we were super wrong. <laughs> um, so I guess we wanted to ask, like, did you have talks with these players? Like, did you did any of these players even cross your mind to begin with? Like, I've, how ridiculously far off were we? Oh, uh, who was it you mentioned? I can't remember. Miku, yeah. Uh, so we said uh, Christo or Christo, yeah. um, Mihu, Thomas, uh, Nato Suffix, and I mentioned uh, an American player, Cynic. Right. Uh, I, I, I can say was, without mentioning names, I, I spoke with two of them at least. Uh, but like I've been speaking with a lot of players, and I didn't hide it. Like. That's also yeah. why there was this misconception of that there was Miku and who was it more? XE Power and Twist. Uh which I've all, all, all been talking to, but didn't go any further than that. Uh but I, I keep my mind open and I still do. And if anyone wanna talk with me or they are willing to, to talk with me, then like I spoke with I would say the whole North roster. Uh now they became Danish. Uh of course, uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I've been talking with everyone, but it, it's it's just very important for us that we do it our way, and we don't do it because of they want like 
here's 20k do you want to join a team yeah i would like to but they don't believe in the project and they don't want to do all the criteria we put up like uh right now we're still in the, in the early stages but the plan is that we are going to track their sleeping schedule they're making sure they're getting the right food the nutrition diets uh, making sure they're working out all these things like and for some of these older players <laughs> older players like 27 8 years old they have never <laughs> been doing it you know like a lot of them besides maybe from Australis, you know, and they have never been doing these things and they find it a waste of time many times because, hey, I didn't do this back in 17 when I was in the finals constantly. I was just eating pizza and smoking weed. It's like, yeah, but my, like, my counter to that is always, yeah, you did that, but you didn't win the final. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? And same goes with, yeah, but look how good he is and he does X, Y, and Z. It's like, yeah, but how could he be if he didn't do that and actually took care of his body and everything? Like, this is my kind of argument. Yeah, you're really good, but how good is your potential if you really go for it? And this is where you see, like, players, like, in football, again, like Ronaldo. Like, he's talented, but he's also insanely hardworking. I mean, like, he, he might be the greatest footballer of, of, of all time, and I'm not into football at all, but he's just a very... Uh, like, he's just this person you look up to, you know, and if people really want to do that, they can achieve a lot. Like, but... A lot of times they don't want to do it and they see this paycheck and that's all they're doing, you know, and it's just the wrong perception for me and I don't want to work with these people. All right. I was going to use a, a football analogy as well for that is that um, Arsene Wenger, uh, when he came into English football, he noticed that all of the players were drinking alcohol, eating badly, and he completely changed the nutrition around them and obviously famously went on to win the Premier League multiple times and transformed um, football um, with the nutrition and the sleep schedule and all those things you're talking about. So I think there is precedent for what you're saying being extremely uh, useful in a competitive environment. Oh, yeah, I, like I don't uh, think I there's have... any question about it. Like, it's, if anyone want to argue that, I'm going to be like, <laughs> like, okay, well, <laughs> go over there and do that, bro. I don't really care about that. I'm, I'm not going to dis discuss uh, science with people if, if the science says, says this and their belief is somewhere other way. It's just a waste of time, you know? We've talked a lot about football on this podcast for a Counter-Strike podcast. Not just this episode, but just in general. <laughs> it's, very, it's very odd. It's it's very much my background. It's where I get, you know, I get a lot of that. Thing. All right. I want to switch to, I want to switch topics a little bit. I want to talk about Valorant for like half of a second. So what do you think about Valorant doubling down on the coaching position by adding coaches slots and overall just encouraging it while Valve continues to push back on the idea of a coach? Well, I, now I'm going to be honest, I didn't follow Valorant that much. I was offered several positions mm -hmm. as a coach when when my band hit, uh, declined everything because I don't like the game. I think it's... It, I. I don't want to get in the crossfires here, <laughs> like doing a new Richard Lewis against Rocket League or something like that. But I, I just think it's, I really, I really think it's a bad game. Like I don't like it at all. I think the the engine it runs on is really smooth, and the gameplay, the way you play it, is really smooth, you know. But the idea is just way off for me. Um, I think Riot has always been taking care of the esports environment, like you saw back in when was that, sixteen, fifteen, maybe. They had this massive show in uh, Korea where they have Imagine Dragons come and play and all that things. Like it cost them a fortune where they have, like they don't earn anything on that, but they create something special, you know, that a lot of people want to be part of. And that uh, spread like rings in the water, you know, like, and by the end of that, you have this huge uh, company with Riot and also at least uh, DLCS and everything. Um, so I think it's just in their DNA, Riot, to do it like that. And I think Valve haven't been pressured by anything regarding CS. So why would they? Like looking from a business perspective. Now I'm as a Counter-Strike fan, I fucking hate it that they don't go more into it. <laughs> but as a business perspective, it, it makes sense. Why waste money on something that's working and there's no competitor to it? Like this is a matter of fact of it. But now I think they are being more and more forced to it if they want to keep this hype going. Uh it's not like CS it did or anything, so even though there's a good memes about it. Um but yeah, I, I think it's really cool that Valorant is taking the next steps because hopefully that pushes Valve as well. All right. And are there any players that you guys were looking at that ended up switching games instead of saying in Counter-Strike? You don't need to name names or anything, but like, mm, were there... I don't think so. There might be one or two that were like, 
had contracts ready actually just to sign for a Valorant team, but they really want to stay in CS. I I think there was one or two in these uh, situations. Yeah, I, I think didn't the, have to, it wasn't Hiko, was it? No, no, no. You weren't trying to sign Hiko. <laughs> I think it, I think it was way more of an American thing than a European thing for. Oh, for sure. I mean, it also makes it sense. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you look at the American market right now, like there is no CS. Like, it's a shame that it's like that. But uh, Valorant just they just took their 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 chance and they, they saw an opportunity and they took it and and that's why you see this. Uh, these people running away from CS in America because they can see a salary in the end of the tunnel, you know. And I think, sadly, this is this is what happening. You see a lot of players leaving because they can get a salary in America and they can stay in America. They don't have to move to Europe or fly all the time. I, I think this is the reason why you see it. I don't believe... I, I simply don't believe that... Yeah, I can even name it. Like, a guy like Ethan, I don't believe he loves Valorant as same as he does CS. Uh... I, I just can't see it. Like Nitro, it made sense he did it because like he was about to be a dad. Uh, he had his wife, family, everything in America. He didn't want to travel that much. He could play Valorant in America and not live far from home. It makes sense to do that from a financial perspective and also a family perspective. But I don't believe they did it because of love of the game. I think they did it mm-hmm. because of other reasons, which is also fair enough. But that that's just a... At least that's my perception of it. All right. Did you consider trying to attract some of the American players who are staying in Counter Strike, uh, Two Mad Lions, and building, you know, getting some of the best talent that still remains? Uh, I have an ex. I have been. I have been speaking with some organizations and some players, uh, but but not uh, not so much because um, there is a select few I think could could do it. But you see a lot of people they have to move here or give up the whole family and then it's, it's really hard for people to, to, to just do that um, for me I'm open for it you know but my network in America is also limited you know so it's not always I know who exactly is up for grasp and, and all these things so 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 for, for that sake it's like I don't really know like uh, there is probably a few good American players uh, that could be up for grasp but I haven't uh, talked with them yet there's like four, and none of them are me. So. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's also what we're looking for right now. Is like right now we have the rookie down, so I don't look for talent right now. So that's also why I, lo- I didn't really yeah. look for America because like the only person I know in America right now that will fit right in that will be a guy like Nitro, and as we just talked about, he's playing Valorant. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Which so general Counter Strike scene stuff. There's been a lot of talk recently about the staleness of the map pool. And there's been these seven maps for like the last two years, right? Since Vertigo was introduced. And before that, it's, it's been a change every two years. Do you want to see reworks done to the whole map pool? I've heard some people saying, screw the whole map pool, throw everything out and put seven brand new maps in. I've heard some people saying like mass move like three or four out and in just to get something new. What's your, what's your kind of take on seeing reworks done and like map changes there? Uh, let's start with vertical. Uh, absolute <laughs> dog shit map. Like it's horrible. It's so bad. Like it. Vertigo is so polarizing because I love Vertigo, but some people hate. Like you hate Vertigo, uh, and I like I understand both sides of it. For me, it's constant. It's like you can watch one map, like one match in Vertigo. You can just take the same match and put two new <laughs> names in because it's the just same copy, thing paste happens. It. You know. Smoking a planning in the smoke, coming out, smoking, diffusing. Oh, they went around. What the fuck? You 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 don't have any room to make any plays. You as a T, there's three entry points: mid, A, and B. And it's like, okay, how do I create a gap here so I can get like an advantage, like you can a nuke or whatever, like where you have to force the CC rotations. It's not so easy to do here, and there is so many aspects of CS that is not shown on vertical. And I think this is why I hate it the most. Like. For you to create a gap on vertical, uh, the the CT must make a mistake, like a huge one, and leave a gap open for you for like twenty seconds, and then you walk out mid, and maybe go heaven or whatever. It's like the, the chance of it happening is just almost zero uh, in top professional Counter Strike, and and I just feel like there's so many, um, so many things going lost on that map compared to you see on, on other maps, you know. Um, 
And that's probably just my take on it. I, I really dislike the map. Uh, but it's apparently it's a very common take from people I've spoken to. Uh, so, yeah, but regarding like the, the, the map one. changes, I I love when they introduced everything. I think it was a cool idea. I, I I love to play it in the beginning, but once you saw what the limitations was, it's kind of like okay, now it's pretty boring. You know, like it's kind of like the the if you remember back to one point six, like the old, old cobblestone, like the first cobblestone, there was like three entrance points. It was like CT dominated completely because. Three B's locking, uh, like three guys locking down B. Once they didn't come, they rotate the one back over. The three guys holding two entrances, you can't do anything. So you saw like these fourteen ones. I didn't even think it was MR twelve back then. So like eleven ones, ten two, whatever, all the time, because it was impossible to do anything. You were locked in this scenario, and I just think like when you have maps like that, it just becomes boring because there's no creativity in it. But I like the idea that you put in a new map, like and and try out things like. It, for my matter, they can put in canals or whatever. I don't really care. It's going to be fun to watch in a way, you know, like it's going to be completely new. People are going to fuck around, throw a lot of nades and be like, oh, I didn't know we could do that. And I think this is where CS is really interesting when you see these new things on a really old map, you know. I think that's one of the coolest things you can see. Yeah, seeing seeing weird boosts on Reddit on Overpass, which has been around for forever at this point, and like seeing th- that kind of stuff is really cool always yeah, exactly. i've heard uh one of my friends uh mentioned season to me as one of the ones that he wanted to see added in oh i love season and so much. that was nice <laughs> i don't i don't think there's a single person that's against adding season it's the same with tuscan like it's why yeah. not adding it you know like and even if it's not tuscan or whatever just add something like i also think it's refreshing and i think it also like if they would do like doing one map rotation is not enough in my opinion because basically what you would do as top team just ban away that map and then hooray you have to all map you know so like doing a three map rotation would probably be good because then at least you always get one map you are comfortable on but you are forced to learn new maps all the time uh that could be a fun iteration i don't think it's going to be ideal and i don't think it's never going to happen i think one map is also fine uh but i can see the argument for having like three maps in and out you know and then rework like even adding like when they removed the skyboxes on mirage it was like a new map you know like that was pretty fun to do to watch you know and i think these small changes on the map can can just do so much you know yeah w- watching carrigan throw fake a smokes all the way from b apps was just enlightening to me on seeing the fake execute from the absolute other side of the map um i like i vividly remember that uh, um what are what are some of the things that the younger generation, considering you're working with a lot of them now, better at than like the older generation? And what are they and what are they worse at? I think they're better in every single like in they're just better in in everything, I would say. But of course the, the decision making is not there. And that is what's costing you nine out of ten rounds. Like everybody can shoot headset if you have the favorable angle, you know. And like everybody on the top, they have a re- remarkable aim. Uh, but these youngsters coming up, they're just better in everything, like movement, aim, like the mechanics of it all. They also know how to communicate because of PL and everything. Uh, they just have so many things we didn't have when we were growing up, or what we can say. Uh, like the, the ones who are like in the 27, 8 plus now, they didn't have the same opportunity as these youngsters have. Uh, so... I think they're going to be better in every single way as you see it. Uh, but they just lack the understand, like the, the deep understanding of CS and when to do what and what scenario and why you would do that. Uh, that is the most thing. And, and that comes with experience. Hence why we need an experienced player on our team. <laughs> What's the secret to looking cool with a man bun? Because neither of us could pull it off. If- I have. We I've tried. tried. I've it just, absolutely it doesn't no work. idea. Like honestly, it was just. <laughs> it was actually. I think it was one of my first events with Mouse. I was in Sydney, and I just I had a I didn't make to I didn't cut my hair or for some reason it looked horrible and someone just said why did you put it up I think SX Voxic said like you look like a ninja and I said like oh yeah that's fun let's do that and that could be my look kind of way you know like they remember me as a coach with the man bun or whatever under the ninja or whatever. And then it just, yeah, I just, I just liked it to stick with it. It was really easy to keep. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it stuck well enough that we're asking you a question yeah, it's, about it's, it now. It's still heavy like, here, so. 
that's that that along with uh, beating G two is like your legacy oh, now. Oh, that was a fun moment. I still feel bad for them. Like. How, what was what was that like? <laughs> I mean, it was it was weird every single way because, like, I think I had one of the worst HLTV ratings ever recorded on Vertical. <laughs> Uh, talking about vertical, like shit map. I think I have zero zero seven rating or something like that on on, on that map against you two. James Bond. I I was. And and like I got absolutely wrecked. And the funny part is that I told Kerrigan, well, it's pretty easy to play A. You know, you just smoke here, you do that. I tried it, I got wrecked completely. You know, <laughs> there's no chance. And he laughed at me so hard, like when we met him in Russia. But then we came on to train, and it was like we just pucked it up and. It was one map we won against him. That it was the final and everything, and you know, that's basically it. But you can always lose one map regardless of how bad the team is and all that. It's not like like I have terrible aim, but my understanding of CS is pretty good, so I can always give me an orb and I hold an angle. I can probably shoot a guy, and that was basically what happened. And I'm trained there, so uh, and plus Rubs was just on fire also. So, but that was pretty fun to to try at least. I, I felt really bad for G2 because they got so much flame for that. And if we play that match a hundred times, they're probably gonna win it ninety-five. You know, so it's like, yeah, they lost one map to that. That's basically how it, how you have to see it. How can you justify paying a salary to somebody with a view model like TMBs? Because that's atrocious. <laughs> I actually, I don't even know the his view model. He's got it. Um, he's he's got like the gun in the middle. It's like golden eye. No. I didn't even know. <laughs> I don't care. It's, like I've seen the highlights. That's from something it. you need to ask him now. <laughs> yeah. I, I I never really it's... like for me. I never care about these skins, view model resolutions. No, whatever works for you works for you. Like that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I, no, I mean that that work that works for everyone. It's just like his is so different than anyone I've ever seen. It was <laughs> it, it had to be an asking point. I, I didn't I didn't I even think Chris J has so. quite a similar. One. But okay, I'm not really spectating much of the practice now, so. I didn't really pay much attention to it. I must be honest there. Yeah, that was like a trick question because if you did, if you'd have seen it, we'd have known you were in the uh, in the server. We'd be like, oh, ah. you're not allowed to do that. So it's you clever. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got any other questions, Elliot? <laughs> uh, the only other thing I had uh, written down to talk about was uh, about JL. and the fact that he his ratings uh, in the past were not particularly good, and then recently just before you picked him up he had like this crazy vein of form where he was just like going like plus eight plus ten plus fifteen plus three like he was just having this really good vein of form um was that something you took into consideration do you think he's improved massively in the last year or so i mean jay was was also a player i've been talking to with the one of our let's call it scouts we hired uh from the baltics and his name came up as well uh same goes with lmbt uh so, I mean, I don't give that much about stats and all of Nation TV. I never look at it. I don't really care because it's you can be set up to have good stats. You can bait a lot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't really care. But I want to see who they are. And in our interview, he was just really interesting. Like we had like four stages of interviews, and and he, uh, we have this test as well from the sports psychology. His scores were out of the, the this world, like one of the best you ever seen. So. We thought like, yeah, let's take Gamble. He fits the project. He really want to work. Uh, let's try it. So yeah. Is there, is there anything else you wanted to say about uh, about the the project? And is there is there any anything you feel you, is gone unsaid? No, I feel like I just like I want people to understand that we are in an experiment phase and we are looking out for the players right now who's available and uh, we are we are gonna spend money when the time is right. But I don't want to just buy a player to sell him off again and lose 200k uh, for absolutely nothing so it's a project in all senses of the word project yeah. it's not finished it's it's still it's still it's important. very much just in the making like right now we just announced this team you might see addition uh, next week you might see one getting cut next week we don't know like i, I honestly can't tell you uh, because we we are working uh, really hard in the background like i've never had so many meetings before my wife hate me right now. So, <laughs> uh, and, and this is just how it is. You know, it's a startup project and, and we are going to make mistakes. We are going to hire some people who 
doesn't fit the the, the project or we made a misjudgment uh, we are going to make mistakes that's 100 percent sure but we are going to own those mistakes and 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 hopefully learn learn from them so they don't happen again or uh, but the same goes with our successes like with the talent we pick up if if they're going to be successful you're also going to hear me bloat about that on twitter that's 100 <laughs> percent. i'd expect nothing less <laughs> we'll be happy to hear it <laughs> yeah all right yeah, wonderful all right thank you again ben. you're welcome thank you for coming on <laughs> All right, so big thank you to Regin for coming on and talking with us for like 45, 50 minutes. That was fantastic. What's your thoughts on some of the stuff he said? I think it's interesting. Obviously, we a lot a lot of us have the preconception that the Mad Lions roster was cheap, as he outlined. You know, that's it's only cheap because he doesn't believe that just spending money is the the solution. He wants somebody. He wants to build a a project, and you can definitely see the fact that these players are very young, they are very inexperienced. And I like the fact that he's willing to experiment because I don't think Counter-Strike is solved. I don't mm-hmm. think it's... You have your five players, they do this. That, it's not solved. I, the idea of a six-man roster is something I've been a little bit skeptical skeptical about. But testing it with uh, two Warpers, I think, is an interesting idea. And the fact that they're just willing to just go, yeah, let's try it. Let's, you know, or, you know, I've been talking to everyone. You know, he talks about all these players that he's talked to, and I think that is very interesting to me that he has genuinely exhausted, or it seems like he's exhausted everything. And the the idea he wants to go with is this development roster, um, and I don't think he'll mind me saying that because it's pretty much he said it's going to take a year, it's going to take yeah. two years, but he, I think, taking inspiration from gambit and from spirit is these teams that the young cores that just stuck together i think that's a a good idea and it's got to be a cheaper way of building a super team than spending 10 million and then you know folding two months later yeah and and he he talked specifically about like here they're still looking for that experienced player they're not done then they know they're not done like he he was very very up and clear about the fact that this is a project we're not done yet. This is the experimentation time. We're not done. And that we're still looking for that experienced player. We're still looking for the person that helps with the decision making um, of the entire team, whether that be, I, I don't know. But I, I think it was really interesting to find out that he's kind of on the same page as some of the rest of us on. This is this is not a win now roster. This is a let's get our shit together. Let's let's do our stuff correctly. Let's get a world beater for the next year. Let's train everyone. Let's get this to be good. Yeah, I think that's the the way forward. I, I didn't want to give him any ideas on who to get as the experienced player because clearly our ideas are just so far out. That well, know, apparently we, we our so ideas were, out, so. we were so far out, and also AZ isn't available. So just, yeah, so like I don't know, what, I don't know what to suggest anymore. If it's not AZ yeah. or MSL or Malves, I don't know who to suggest. So I mean, MSL's available. He is, <laughs> although all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be surprised if it's MSL. It, it seems he doesn't want to. He wants somebody who really buys into the project, and I feel like MSL probably has his own ideas of how to run a team. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for listening and watching this week. Uh, please make sure to follow us on Twitter at, at ReadTLDR, at AZESC, and at Logan Ramp We will see you guys again next week for our normal shenanigans. Peace. Hey, it's Logan. Thanks for listening to Overtime on Inferno. If you can, please refer your friends to the podcast by using the link in the show notes. It helps us out a lot, and you guys can get some real-life CSGO stickers. And if you have any feedback at all, please email me at logan at readtldr.gg. We love hearing feedback from our listeners.